So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our sixth grade rising, our rising sixth grade parent information night. Thank you so much for coming. It's so nice to be able to actually have a face-to-face -face event, even though we have, as you can see right now, around over 40 people joining us virtually. But if you would find some seats, and then we're going to begin our program. We will end it with questions. So you can jot those down, but there's, do you want to talk about first, just for a second, explain those QR codes? Sure, so you'll notice we have a QR code on the screen right here. This is for Mentimeter. There's also some on your table, so if you have questions as we go, you can submit them to us and it'll store them, and then we'll answer them. If we don't get to them throughout the presentation, we'll get to them at the end. She had to explain that because I won't be able to do that. So thank you, Bryce. So I'd like to introduce the uh, staff that deals with gifted uh, services in our county. Tyler Clark is our gifted art teacher right there. There's Tyler. And you notice her students have come to showcase the art that they create. Um, Ms. Wagert from A.G. Wright, you want to come out here, guys? Here. Okay, uh, Lisa Arthur from Dixon Smith Middle School, Rebecca Muso from Drew Middle School, Rachel Matron from Gale Middle School, Audra DeFore from H.H. H. Pool, uh, Scott Tata from uh, Rodney Thompson, and Jack Kearney from Shirley Hine, and then Bryce Barnes who peeked her head out Right, right there. So Bryce is our new uh, Stafford Middle School gifted resource teacher starting next year. So we're really excited about having her. The other, you want to jump on here just for a second? So Carol Hall is my administrative assistant. If you contact me, you will be going through her. So uh, we depend on her a lot, right? And I am Stephanie Fellinger, and I oversee K-12 gifted and uh, secondary programs for the county. Okay. Yes, you get to go first. All right. Do I have a oh. Um what's on it up? Oh, sorry. We have to make this your slide. Yeah. Somebody in the meeting. I'm very excited. Well, hi, so I'm Tyler Clark. I'm the focus art teacher. Notice she didn't say uh, for HH Pool or for H Right, that's because I teach in all of our middle schools in Stafford County. So I travel around to eight different schools. I'm at a different school every two days to work with students who are identified as gifted and talented in art. Um, so this is me. One of my students made this for me and gave it to me today, and I'm so excited. It's <laughs> not just the cutest thing you've ever seen. So this is the type of things that my students do independently um, at home. I do not know how to crochet or knit. Is it crochet or knitting? Crochet? We'll go with that, crochet. Um, so if your students are interested in gifted art, uh, one thing that you can do, anybody can refer a student for the gifted art program. So it could be parents, the students themselves can um, refer themselves. Uh, community members, teachers, really anybody can refer a student for gifted art. Once they are referred, they go through an identification process, which includes a portfolio. So there's five required drawings that they have to do for that. They can also include things that they do uh, on their own time, which shows their creativity and their talent. Um, it also includes, so there's a portfolio, there's a timed drawing that they do uh, with me, and then there's a parent checklist or a parent survey and then a teacher survey, and then all of that data gets collected and that's how we determine whether or not a student is in need of services. Um, so students meet with me approximately twice a month. Uh, we start in August with classes, and then we go all the way through the end of the school year. Uh, I go two days in a row to student school. So today I was at AG Wright. Tomorrow I'll, I'll be at AG Wright. Next week, two days I'll be at Thompson, and two days I'll be at Poole. And then I start my rotation over again. Um, curriculum is extended from their regular art classes so that we have the art SOLs for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And then my projects that we do 
are very flexible and open-ended to allow students to really showcase what their abilities are, um, but they are extended upon from the SOLs that they learn about in their regular art classes. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer right off the bat? So over here, I have four of my amazing, amazingly talented eighth grade art students. Um, and they have their artwork out here to show you some of the things that uh, they do on their own and also some of the projects that they've done with me this year. So please feel free and please go over and check them out because they are so talented. I also have a QR code um, right after the first student's artwork that has uh, will take you to our Focus Art website. So if you're interested in seeing the projects that we've done this year, they're all in there. Um, there's some independent student art as well as some of my own personal art. And then there's also some little pieces of paper there that have my name and my email address on them. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to talk about the delivery of services because they are different than the elementary um, services that we provide. So we're going to talk about cushion services, flex time, differentiated classroom support, cluster grouping, progress monitoring and support, monthly newsletters, Fredericksburg Regional Governor School, and independent study. Okay, so hi, I'm Lee Weigert, a member at AG Wright, and push in support. So, our teachers are busy, right? And the ratio within the classroom, they've got one teacher, 25, 30 students. So what the focused teacher can do, what the gifted teacher can do, is they can come into the classroom and they can help to support that differentiation that's going on in the classroom. They can work with small groups, they can do stations. I tend to bounce around. My students know that they see me all over the building. And they may see me in the sixth grade hall, the seventh grade hall, the eighth grade hall. I was in science six last week. I'm in English eight this week. I'm coming up to be in geography classes. And what I'm doing is I may be working in stations to help with research papers and try to help students to take their writing to the next level or their research skills to the next level. I may be helping students in science connect with their learning to like larger issues that are going on, such as like how does an egg drop experiment um, relate to the more how we landed Mars rovers, um, things like that. So the focus teachers generally push into the classrooms in middle school as opposed to pulling the students out. Now the advantage of this is that we get to address students' needs across you know, the various different um, subject matters. Also, the students who have more classes in middle school, they're not missing that class time by being pulled out of the classroom. So that's what we do with our efficient services. So like I say, I like to bounce around. They see me everywhere. And I have a really great time seeing my kids in all different settings within the classroom. Good evening. Oh, sorry. Um, so I'm Audrey Dithiori Wood um, at AJ School, and I'm talking a little about how we support differentiation. Um, so if you're not familiar with the term, differentiation refers to the techniques teachers use to address learning differences within the classroom in an effort to ensure that all of our students receive opportunities for growth. There are numerous ways that the classroom content, the learning process, and student products can be adjusted to provide challenges for our gifted learners. And as gifted resource teachers, we can have a significant impact when we work closely with your child's classroom teachers as they plan their instruction and classroom activities. This happens behind the scenes, um, which typically means that it's going on while your child is attending their elective courses uh, and their grade level teachers are on plan and we are in meetings. Additionally, as Ms. Weigert was discussing, we can assist with the implementation of those opportunities for differentiation. Um, so there are times when we may be invited into class to support both the teacher and the student. 
Um, for example, we may have to facilitate a group as students are working on a variety of activities simultaneously. We may have the classroom teacher with assessments, which are a valuable tool in determining what students' understanding can do. So our goal is to support your child's classroom teachers in providing a learning environment that allows your child to grow and thrive. Hi. Transitioning from elementary school to middle school is a big deal. There's a lot of new changes, different schools, new friends, and things of that nature. One way that we support your student both academically and socially is by grouping them with like-minded peers. It's really important for them to have an opportunity to spend time with those who are willing to think outside the box and kind of go with their crazy ideas. So we group them together in several of their core classes so that they have an opportunity to work with one another. Hi, I'm Rachel Natern, and I am the focus teacher at Dale Middle School. And um, one of the other, I guess, services that we provide your students with is progress monitoring. And the way we do this is we are monitoring their grades, their SCAR, their math scores, um, their academics, and providing that help and support while they, where they need it. Um, sometimes, just because they're gifted, they still need that support. Some kids need support in, other, in certain areas that others don't. Um, and that's... Okay. All the instructions focused on <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa Arthur from Dixon Smith Middle School. And as this is Melissa from Drew was saying, we do recognize that the transition from elementary to middle school is a big deal, especially if this is your oldest or first experience. Um, you notice a difference when you come in and you feel a little bit of um, separation from being in the, you know, a lot of times our parents volunteer in the element, elementary school and some of those options are not always there in the middle school. So one way we try to stay in touch with you, our community, the students and our staff, is we offer a we, a monthly newsletter that goes out, it offers articles and sometimes videos and we do contests every month with a different thematic unit that we put together as a team. So, um, you want I, yeah, you want to show them one? So this is in particular April, which this one just came out. Um, it, some of you may see it because some of us share it with the elementary schools for the rising sixth graders. Um, but you'll notice April, our our theme for April is structure and patterns. It went nicely with National Poetry Month. We provide different contests. And at the end, there's always, well, oh, I love this area right here, our student voices area. We all put together a question for the close of the month to our students who then respond. And then we pull some of our students. So you get to see some of the words of our own students in each of our middle schools here in Sacramento County. That's always a nice little bit of addition. And then at the end of the newsletter is um, a link to different opportunities that you may not know were out there. We typically go with things that do not cost anybody anything. So we find uh, activities for each month, ongoing contests out there. This is our trivia contest. You'll see uh, the different winners each month get uh, posted in the newsletter. And then we give them the next month. So it's fun stuff for the kids to do and also very informative for you as parents. We typically put in some articles that are good for students, for staff, and for parents. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jack Harding. I'm the gifted resource teacher at Shirley Hine. And another part of our delivery of services is through the Commonwealth Governor's School, commonly referred to as CGS and FRGS, which is Fredericksburg Regional Governor's School. That takes place during the summer. Uh, we have an application support night, usually for the entire district. And usually, school by school, we'll do our own support during the day, or sometimes we have one 
uh, in the evening for parents and students. Uh, during this time, uh, for the CDS support, going through that application process, we will help students uh, through COGAT testing, which is the cognitive abilities test. We'll look at their GPA. We'll look at some of their teacher recommendations, and we will help them through a portfolio and interview process. Uh, and once again, that is throughout all the middle schools. Uh, we also uh, help out with the application process for the summer STEM program. Uh, as far as FRGS, uh, students in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade would get to apply for uh, these summer programs. All identified gifted students are eligible uh, to apply for these programs. And the cool thing about them is uh, sometimes, like Professor Indiana Jones, you got to get out of the library and do things. Uh, so for our young scientists, people are interested in science, they actually get to apply what they're learning in the classroom, those themes, those concepts, they actually get to get their hands on stuff and do things. And uh, that's really what we want our young learners to do. So uh, we will be moving on to So as Derek was mentioning, uh, pardon me, I'm usually really, really loud, but my voice is a bit, a bit subdued today with the wonderful pollen that is outside. Uh, but that being said, you're in sixth grade now, or going to sixth grade, boys and girls, and Mr. Hardy uh, was talking a lot about something that's going to happen already in three years. And flex time has a lot to do with that. Uh, one of the things that I would say to you is that our CGS, or Commonwealth Governor School, is our gifted high school program. So we do encourage kids to apply to it. Also, we encourage kids to apply to the Fredericksburg Regional Governor School. Do we have any parents of students or siblings of students that go to the Commonwealth Governor School or who have been in the Governor School? By show of hands. Okay. How many of you are new parents to sixth graders and have never had a sixth grade student previously? Excellent. Okay, so something that will be very unfamiliar to a lot of you is the flex program, okay, or the flex period in the day. Now, each building is going to have its own flex period scheduled during each day, and that flex period will take place between Tuesday and Friday of each week in each building. It's a smaller period of day, which typically, for example, in my building takes place between this first and second period. It's about 45 minutes in length, during which the term flex is applied flexibly. It is a flexible class period so that students who need intervention or support in a class, either for the entire nine weeks or the entire year, semester or something to that nature, may get that additional support in mathematics, English, science, or social studies. On the other hand, we understand that our students probably aren't going to need a whole lot of support during those particular time periods. They might need a day or two to recoup for algebra class or Math 7 extended, science, social studies, maybe even English. But they don't need to be there the entire time. In other words, they're there for intervention purposes for a small period of time. Now, what are they going to do with the rest of their time? The flex period is designed so that within each of your buildings, there's going to be a catalog. And some of the buildings, it'll occur three times a year. And some buildings, it'll occur four times a year, where there will be a different change in the student's flex course. So. It's during those times that we're able to offer our enrichment periods, contests, field trip opportunities, things that we may develop for students to take part in that will be above and beyond and enriching to the curriculum on a whole nother scale. In my particular building, I work with our other staff members to help staff different programs, things that we used to call in the past uh, uh, different opportunities that might include debate, opportunities that might include special things like Model United Nations, which was held this year over at Dixon Smith Middle School, in which we will prepare the students to be UN representatives and conquer a topic based on world politics or world happenings. And particularly in these cases, our world needs to have our students practicing these peacekeeping methods and ways of diplomacy. Additionally, there may be any myriad of number of things from science fair to an independent study course that may be a passion project independent from an independent study course that, that you're going to hear about shortly. Okay? The purpose for FLEX is to provide your children the opportunity to opt in to some really cool things 
that will extend their ideas, their interests, and things beyond the graduate curriculum. So what we will typically do during that time period in which Stafford Middle, Drew, Thompson, Poole, or what have you, is going ahead and making a transition from one flex period to another, which generally correlates about nine weeks or seven weeks each. It's not always going to coincide with the report card because we won't start until about three weeks into the school year with this cycle. Okay? Now, with that being said, what I like to do for my students and for my parents is to advocate for those courses. When I look at the catalog, even if I'm not involved or have a hand in designing one of those courses, that would be best for them to enrich their learning. In other words, while we like perhaps to do yoga or play basketball or perhaps basket weaving, we want to espouse in these coursework options and enrichment students' ability to research, to write, to apply skills that they're learning in that class to the everyday world. In other words, not to just be learners, but be novice practitioners or beyond. Some of these courses may be enriched from one year to the next. They may require a prerequisite understanding or knowledge base. They may require that the student is not an intervention for a period of time throughout that seven weeks or nine weeks, but rather dedicated to the course that they are doing. Okay? In other words, this is a real opportunity for our students to shine apart from the curriculum that staff in Virginia provides, because as we all know, the standards of learning are a minimum standard of learning. And it's our job to take your students and provide them with a maximum kind of push and enrichment to those standards of learning. Obviously, we will want these types of coursework to be based upon and engineered around developing our students' skills and the standards of learning to take them beyond that minimum standard. We also want to help our students in executive functioning skills, organization, research, design, creativity, synthesis, thinking for themselves, doing things like the science fair project where they can earn awards, or perhaps a National History Day for a project where they could earn even a scholarship for college. These opportunities are available for students. So oftentimes what I'll say to kids as they come in and as I visit their elementary schools, because each of us will visit each of your child's elementary schools throughout the next few weeks to put a name to a face, shake some hands, talk to them, make sure they're comfortable coming to middle school. What's your schedule going to be like? What are the differences between elementary and middle school? And what I really, really, really do is I encourage our students, when you come to middle school, you may leave middle school with all kinds of wonderful memories and networking opportunities that you've created with other peers of yours that are students in your school now. Okay? Or if you look back at your middle years and you never did opt into these opportunities, you might feel kind of sorry or like you didn't gain the kinds of things that you should have while you so parents, this is where you come in. We all understand that our kids are not always ready and raring and tearing through that catalog to find the most challenging course. I need you, we need you to light that fire. Put the candle underneath them to help them to understand where this is going to take them. Because not only is it a bit more challenging, but guess what? Most of these opportunities are way more, any ideas? fun and engaging and intended for people of your thinking capabilities and intellectual abilities to be engaged instead of just sitting idly by thinking I already know this. Fair enough. Now I hope as parents I'm sure that you want your kids to be engaged. Students, I hope you want to be engaged. Because if you know, oh my gracious, we got a lot of work to do. Okay? But I'm looking forward to seeing you next year in the transitioning you into middle school, things will be different, but not only will we be here as your focus teachers, as your additional counselor within your school, that you can come talk to us about anything, but we're also here parents for you all, because we understand that your child sitting here has unique needs. Boys and girls, you do. And parents, they do. And so I'm here at Thompson and all the rest of these people to talk with you anytime you can need support. We're there to be your liaison whenever you have a difficult time or a difficult question to ask a teacher that maybe you just don't feel comfortable asking. A lot of kids come to me sometimes or one here and there, Mr. Trout, I'm bored in class. 
But I'm afraid to tell the teacher that because she's not going to like me, and I really like Mrs. Humana. Well, that's my job as a liaison. You as a parent may feel, good gracious, what's this? And anytime you have to say, good gracious, what's this, most of the time it's not true anyway. So make sure that you use your teachers here as your advocate for your children, because that's our job. Yes, they'll have an additional counselor for the three years that they're in middle school. And in most of our middle schools, the same counselor will follow and go with them from sixth to seventh and eighth grade. But more importantly, you have us as a resource to be your primary driver of guidance for your students' middle school years academically. Okay? And it's a great resource for you to have. And we'd love to hear your questions. Because no question is a silly question. That being said, I'm going to move on. OK, so Mr. Grada talked about, if you could Switch it to the independent study. Talked about this independent study, and we we are really excited because right now independent study for middle school does not exist. But starting in your student's seventh grade year, they will have the option to take an independent study. And I will encourage you, even though we do want our students to have rigorous courses, there are times that you just need them to. Let them go to whatever passion they have. And that passion might be guitar playing. It might be uh, creating uh, art. It might be crocheting. It, because one of the skills that we need our students to be able to develop is how to relax, right? So sometimes kids need to develop those skills because we want them to have a balanced life, right? So yes, I want them to take lots of rigorous courses and really challenge themselves and develop what we call grit and mindset. But we also want to think about that balance. What can they do to learn to have fun with that can carry them not only to middle school, through high school, through college, and in their lifetime later on. And I want you to think about those things you do as hobbies right now that you started long ago, right? And you've been carrying them through some of it's track or basketball or you know baseball. It could be a sport. So we really encourage this kind of well-rounded child, right? We want to support that. And Mr. Trout is very right. We are the ladies of your students. If your child is having problems in the classroom, we are your first defense. You go to us and we will work with the teachers and really help to support those children, okay? So we're going to come up front, and if you guys would come up front, and we're going to let you ask questions, and I'm going to let them answer them for the most part, I'm hoping. Um, so questions, any questions? Any questions? All right, so the first question, will the slide presentation be available for viewing after the meeting? Yes, but not until tomorrow because I have Not until tomorrow, but yes. It'll be on the gifted website. It will also be on the gifted website. How and where do you submit a referral for a gifted art student? Yeah, that, that would be you. So the parents can email me. Um, my email address is on the website for um, the, the gifted Stafford County Schools gifted website. There's a link for Focus Art. And if you click that, then that has my email address on it. And you can, if you want to refer your student, you can just send me an email and say, I'd like to refer my student. And then I start the process. Uh, along those lines, um, but ladies and gentlemen, once we get this link to this, we'll also publish it to your elementary teacher who will then fire it to everybody who's on their email list and get it. All right, next question. Do gifted resource teachers have office hours or after school availability so that students can work with them on projects, et cetera, if needed? So, 
Yes, we use that at times to work with students. Um, a lot of the time that does happen during flex time. Um, with next year's schedule, I would suspect it might be before school availability as opposed to after school, but yeah, we will definitely make time to meet with your students and help them out with things. Next question is how much time each day is spent in gifted or focused studies? Okay, so we do not do pull out like you did in elementary, but you may see a gifted resource teacher in three of your classes one day, and then you might not see them for a few days or a week other than in the hallway or during flex. So there's going to be multiple opportunities for them to have contact with your student instead of being pulled out. Okay, so. <clears throat> Um, what was mentioned earlier? Yeah, so see, what was mentioned earlier is that behind the scenes, we're working with your PLCs and your kids' classrooms all the time to make sure that their services are being met through, through differentiation. In other words, I have a history group planning a unit through pictures. I go and I sit down while they kind of create their project and make sure that we're throwing in above and beyond standards to meet that uh, to meet those types of standards that we need for our students at a higher level way of thinking. So oftentimes they may not even realize that it's taking place, but our students are being enriched through their clusters within their differentiated classroom. Right. Okay, next question. If our child was identified as mathematically gifted in elementary school, what gifted resources are available to them beyond the extended math courses? So in middle school, one of the benefits is that we have lots of electives that the students can take. Um, my own, I have two kids that have been through AG Wright, or one of them is currently still in AG Wright. Um, have, they both enjoyed math lab. So that's one of the electives that we have. We also have STEM classes. We have Innovation Studio. So there's a lot of academic electives that can, that go beyond what you see, you know, let's say an extended math and help them apply the skills they're learning in math to real life situations or use their creativity and thinking outside of the box to come up with their own creations. Thank you. All right, so the next one, are flex classes graded? Will they affect students' GPAs or grades? I can have this one. I can have that one. So flex classes are not graded. That is a time for really for students to either get extra help in an area or get that enrichment, go beyond area or beyond what they're learning in the classroom. Um, kind of like Mr. Prada said that where the passion projects, things like that happen. But those classes are not graded and those are, they will not affect the GPA. Right? And I think I can take this next question, but um, Asking if students already filled out their selections, course selections, elective selections. Yes, they've already been filled out and submitted to counseling. Counseling is working on developing schedules. They'll work on those all the way through the summer to make sure that students are put into electives that will hopefully um, meet their needs and match their interests. Um, another question, um, the flex classes sound great, but what if my kid just needs to take a break? I know Dr. Bellinger kind of touched on that a little bit, um, but would anyone else like to add? So as Dr. Pellinger said, we do promote that social and emotional well-being in our students. And sometimes that does mean that they want to take three-on-three -three basketball. And that's okay. Because they're getting their, you know, academics throughout and they're challenging themselves in other things. So it is okay to do one of those laid back. You know your student better than we do. You know what they're coming home and saying. If they are overwhelmed, then encourage them to take something a little lighter. But if they are looking for that challenge, then as Mr. Trotta said, really encourage them to say, hey, maybe I want to look at speech and debate or, or one of those other opportunities. And something that I would also like to mention is uh, just because you're gifted, gifted doesn't mean more. It doesn't mean that you have to do more. We don't want in addition to, we want in place of. 
Uh, we don't want you know like more math problems. We just want different math problems. So it's it's sort of the same with like some of our flex, you know, uh, providing kids with different opportunities than they, they would normally have. So next question: Are focus students clustered in elective courses, or is it only for core curricular courses? They will be clustered specifically for gifted services through their academic classes. However, they may end up being clustered in some of their electives based on availability and their choices. Like world language, if they all pick, you know, they want to take Spanish when they're allowed to take Spanish, then you see them. Right. Right. Um, how many gifted students are normally in a class? Okay, so right now they are seven to what is it? or four to seven. We are uh, currently updating our local plan and we are trying to increase that to 25 to 35 percent in the classroom. Um, and for those of you that don't know what a local plan is, that is the agreement the school board has with the state that says these are our services in. Um, Stafford County for gifted. And so we are trying to increase them. We will know for sure in July whether or not the school board passes that number for us. Okay. Uh, but we think that having a little larger group, especially if you have a big class, you know, to have only have four students in a class of 30 isn't really a lot of students. So we're trying to increase that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. So, and there may be instances where there's a larger <laughs> percentage of the class in that. For example, a lot of our students do end up with extended math seven being the right fit for them as sixth graders. And there may only be three sections of that in grade level. So there could be a higher percentage of focus students in those classes, but there will also be students in those courses that are not identified for gifted services. Um, because the, the courses that are available to them are different than the fact that they are identified for gifted services. Um, you may see that in like some of the world language classes as well, just depending on student selection of courses. If your child was designated as gifted in elementary school and is currently in, in an elementary focus group, will they be reevaluated for middle school focus or will they be automatically placed? So I, when, if you came to the Gale night, um, I always talk to parents about how once you're identified as gifted in Stafford County, you're always identified as gifted in Stafford County. There's no reevaluation. And if you were, let's say you move out of, you're identified in second grade and you move out of Stafford, so you move to Hawaii and you come back, you're still gifted. We don't take that away. And another good, uh, let's just say a, another good uh, peak or part of being uh, identified as gifted is once again, you can participate in the FRGS uh, summer enrichment program. And also if you are thinking about applying for Commonwealth Governor School, you would not have to go through sort of an identification process for that. So being identified in elementary or in middle school, uh, it sort of gives you a little bit of a leg up if you're looking at those programs. Are there any other accelerated classes besides math? I do not believe there are any more accelerated classes other than math currently. That's the, that's the reason why it's so important for these teachers to be working with the classroom teacher to differentiate for your students so that they are being taught at the level that they need to be taught. Okay? Keeping students motivated can be a struggle. Sometimes they just want to do the bare minimum to move on. How do we get them past that point? Yeah, so this is always a difficult one. I was that guy in middle school. I uh, wasn't terribly motivated, probably because of the theater group I hung out with. And Well, where I grew up, education wasn't exactly the most important thing. So what I would suggest to you is that when I find a child, 
particularly one that I can identify with that I know is going through that struggle. And we have to understand that the biggest changes in all their life has happened between sixth and eighth grade with our students, physically, mentally, emotionally, maturely, maturity wise. So oftentimes what I'll try to do is to find, if I can, a mentor for that individual. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes there's somebody better than me, a teacher that perhaps they really identify with. Something of that nature to talk with you about the types of opportunities. Generally speaking, I find that with some of our kids that we feel that way, maybe the opportunity of something they'd really like to do just hasn't come up yet. And that's where the independent study kind of programs and passion projects really help our kids. I'm sure that there are those amongst you out there thinking, my child is really engaged on this, but not so much all that. And so we want to make those opportunities, but we also want to invite students to broaden their horizons for those interest factors. I think that's also where it's very important to make sure that the students are receiving that readiness based differentiation in their core classes. Um, and so again, that comes back to us planning as a team with their teachers, because essentially the teachers will be administering assessments to them, and if their assessment shows that they're ready for the next thing, it really is not optional. The student says, or the teacher says that these people are doing this activity and these people are doing this activity and the students may not realize that. Um, but that's where that differentiation piece can really support students who need to be pushed a bit more. Um, this is also kind of where that progress monitoring comes in. So a lot of times I have several students that will come sit with me during flex because that's where they need that extra time. They just need, one of my students says, I just like to sit in here because it's quiet, or I just like, I just need some downtime. And that's where they do their extra work, or not extra work, but they do their makeup work and things of that nature. So sometimes it's just finding that, that place or that spot for them to get that work completed and making that connection with the student. If I may, to that end, just another type of something to bring you attention. We, somebody mentioned earlier the idea that my child is really struggling right now, they're full. We get it. They're going to have a big transition. And there may be times during the year where your child is struggling with gymnastics or basketball or whatever it is they have going on outside of school. So there is also an academic support period that can be selected, which for us oldsters, that's a study hall. Okay? And they can get support in whatever area that the child needs it. So do understand that sometimes we realize, man, this, this student's life is really busy. Sometimes we don't even realize as parents how busy it is. Both of my children went through gymnastics throughout middle school, and I can't tell you how busy that was, and thank goodness they were somewhat organized. All right? So these kinds of periods are there for them, and we realize not every time, and all the time is our child going to be interested, but that also opens the door for you and I and your child to sit down together and talk about what are the obstacles here that we need to carry on. Okay, so where can we find the application for summer enrichment programs? So your gifted resource teacher will send it out to you. I think it's usually like March that you're going to get that, and it's usually a pretty quick turnaround. So you want to make sure you're keeping your eyes open for that email. We do. I'm a parent. I get a lot of emails from my daughter's school. So. Um, you're not gonna. You should not have gotten it this year. It would be our rising. It would be our current sixth graders, current seventh graders, current eighth graders. They don't. You cannot do FRGS until you're in sixth grade. There is one question I want to address from the registration form that I don't know if we hit. I just want to clarify. There was a question about um, focus and student schedules. So please make sure you realize when your child receives their schedule in the fall, gifted education will not be on it because it's not a graded course. So only graded courses appear on that schedule. The flex period will not be on it. That doesn't mean that they have suddenly been disenrolled from gifted services. Um, it just does not go on there. So just for clarification purposes. But if you move to another state, how does that transition to the next school district? So 
this is my advice if you're planning on moving. Take unofficial transcripts with all the data, like the COGAD scores, all the data from your identification process, and take it with you because it often takes a long time for um, other schools to receive your transcripts. And then by that time, the child might already be scheduled in, in accurately, inappropriately, right? So you can go in, take in their, uh, you know, the schedule that they've taken, you can take in those COGAD scores and uh, what they're identified as and start out right, you know, in the right program. And, and you might end up having to go through another identification process. So just like if you went from here to Spotsylvania County, they may put you all the way through an identification process. It just depends on where you are going and whether or not they will accept our scores because every, every division provides different services. And so, you know, like we have to look when people transfer in, what kind of services were the was this child receiving earlier, and does it align with what we're doing? Yeah, I can talk about a little bit, and that's really really important because I become a big role each year, near this time of the year, for students, for example, who say one came up to me the other day said, "Mr. Trout, I'm, I'm on, unfortunately I'm moving to Charleston, South Carolina." And I know Charleston, South Carolina very well, just because my brother lives there and his children went through the gifted program there. But the unfortunate thing about gifted education is it's not a mandate by the federal government. It's a suggestion by our state. So it's really important that we all band together to advocate for our kids. And if indeed you get transferred somewhere, we understand it. But just do make sure that you keep in touch with us because unfortunately what we've noticed, especially in recent times, files sometimes don't get where we expect them to get quickly. And the quicker you can go with those in hand, the better off you're going to be, and any one of us can help you with that. Because again, we're like for an extra counselor for you. And final question, will the differentiation activities be different than the other children? And if so, how will they be graded? Okay, Lisa, do you want to talk about that? So it depends sometimes on which group you're working with, which PLC, which teacher. Um, sometimes a teacher will eliminate the scoring on another activity in order to allow a score to go in for what we're helping them create to give a little bit more rigor to whatever activity it is. Um, and as Mr. Harding said, it's not about more work. So it's not about oh, you guys are getting 20 vocabulary words, but you're gifted, so you're getting 40. It might be that they're looking up 20 vocabulary words and you're looking at the etymology of the words or something else that's going to give it a little bit more rigor to it. It may count for the same activity, schoolwork, in the grade book, but your child's getting that option to up their rigor a bit. It's not Jeff, you go. Let me jump in here really quick. Uh, just one quick example that I would have of that uh, for science at the beginning of the year. Uh, our science teachers were asking our students to put together a light switch. And what they could do on the computer was draw the, you know, the box with all the wires put in there. And uh, they said, well, how could we differentiate this? I said, we'll have them make a two-switch light box. How do we do that? I told them, well, here, you just add an extra light switch and you put it in and it's basically a, like a drag and you put it together. And what I said was, just the gifted kids, have them try it. If they can do it, great. It's a little bit more difficult, but if they can do it, great. If they can't, let them do the easier one. They should still get the same score, right? Because they've mastered the material. Uh, that's what we want. When our students have mastered a concept, we don't want to give them more. We just want to give them different. And I think it's most important to think about our modes of thinking and the higher level thinking skills. Not all kids are going to come equipped with all the same high level thinking skills. And so what we may have is a PLC that I'm working with, for, for example, science or history, especially, okay, that we understand there may be three different rubrics going around in the classroom for the same project. And there's a reason for that. Because 
same is not always equal. Okay? For your children, in order to get the equal type of education they need and equal access to what they need, it's going to be more complex in nature because we expect our children to think at a higher level than perhaps someone else who is not as equipped to do so. So, it will, none of the assignments will ever be below standard, but it's our job to make sure that your child's activities and assignments, projects, and what have you are engaging and respectful to their intelligence. Okay, thank you so much. So, the, before we end tonight, I would like to turn toward the art students and just thank them so much. And Thank you, Jessica, for showing their art. Before you leave, if you haven't gone over to look at their art, I would highly recommend that. And um, the teachers will be out here if you want to individually go to the, your future gifted resource teacher, feel free to do that. And thank you so much for attending tonight. Thank you.